I'm a, I got another funny. <laughs> Y'all ready? Okay. How many golfers we got in here? Oh, ah, there's a few. Okay. Well, one day in heaven, Moses and Jesus were playing a round of golf with an older gentleman that was on the sidelines, and they, he asked if he could join them. They said, sure. Moses hit the first ball, and he hit it, and, and it did a, a duck hook and went immediately toward the water. When the ball got closer to the water, the water parted, and the dry land rolled up onto the green. The ball landed onto the green. I thought, well, that, that's good for Moses. <laughs> and then it says, and then Jesus hit, was next to hit, and he also hit the ball toward the water. But instead of parting the water, the ball hovered over the water <laughs> and onto the green some six feet from the hole. Now, I am not a golfer, so I really don't know what this means, but I just know that Jesus got it. So the older gentleman asked, um, the older man asked himself, now, hmm, how am I going to top these two guys? So he took a swing and he did a severe slice on the ball to the right. He hit the tree. It bounced along the shoreline next to the water. Before the ball came to a stop, a squirrel picked it up, picked up the ball and started running away with it. And then all of a sudden, an eagle swooped down and picked up the squirrel, making him afraid. So he dropped the ball onto the green and proceeded into the hole, a hole in one. <laughs> Jesus walked over to this man and he looked at him and he goes, he looked down at his face and he goes, oh, good shot, dad. <laughs> I know, I know Pastor Greg don't have these, so he's going to be asking me for these, and I'm going to have to. <laughs> so, but anyway, I just thought that was just downright cute. So, but remember, last week we talked about that God was left-handed. Y'all, y'all remember that? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, all right. Well, Lord, we thank you that we can come into your house, that we can walk and talk in the joy of the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for all the things that you want to do in us. And Lord, we just open our minds, our hearts to you, Lord, today. We thank you, Father, for the completion of the things that you've started in us, that, Lord, you will finish that. If it has to do with wisdom, you will give us and lead us to that wisdom, to that insight, to that discernment, Lord. So today, Father, we just choose to sit at your feet, at your feet, Father. You are our shepherd. You are our Lord, and you are our Savior. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Well, um, let me just, um, I wanted to read um, I was contacted and I, I wanted, to, so I contacted the young lady and asked her if I could share this. And she said, sure, absolutely, um, today. So if you want to turn to Matthew 9, that's where we're going to start. Um, she says, good morning. I wanted to share a sweet testimony with you this morning. As I woke up, I had a really bad headache and my eyes were aching and I was congested. Her little girl, one year of age, was resting. And she said she's resting now, but she also woke up the same way. Praying uh, that she wakes up feeling 100% of herself. She said, anyway, I've been praying in the spirit and glorifying God for his goodness. And I felt like I needed to get up off my hiney <laughs> and get going for the day. She said, so I got fully dressed, fully make up, the braid in my hair, and I got myself dressed. So when, uh, she says, well, when I started to do that, I started listening to your message, Advantages of a Believing Family, Part 3. She puts in bold, I'm not kidding. I got into about three minutes of listening to that, and I realized I no more had the headache, and I felt about 95% better. She says, I want you to know that I love you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and that you are such a joy to listen to. I'm grateful for you as my family and as a strong pat pastor who's willing to be raw and to preach the truth, but still make me laugh. At the same time, love you so much. And she signed her name. And so um, she's got a little girl uh, right around one years old and beautiful, darling, glorious little girl. And 
um, afterwards we were talking a little bit and she was sharing that, you know, how that the word of God, you know, when you hear it, the word of God just reconfirms already what's in your heart. Yeah. And so um, I just I just want to ask you. Um, is there anyone at all here today that that needs any kind of healing in your body? Would you stand any kind of healing, whether it's your back, your neck, your eyes, your ears, your throat, your stomach, you know, your your blood, your veins, your muscles, your tendons? Is it arthritis, tendonitis, bursitis, whatever it is? You know, if you have anything at all wrong with you, anything at all wrong with you, unless your body is 100% perfect and everything is glorious in your body, okay, glory to God, you can still sit. But if there's something in your body that is just not right, you need to stand. All right. Church, take a look around. Take a good look around. Okay. All right, you may be seated. And what I'm going to talk to you today is about healing. Because healing is something that if you don't need it today, because we live in a fallen world, you might need it in a week or so. But it doesn't mean you have to stay in that sickness, amen? We, we want to make sure that we understand that the things that God has done for us are, you know, I talked to you last week about staying connected, and you know, I'm going to bring this in front. I know, so the cameraman, or I might get yelled at. Um, no, he's not going to yell at me. You know, this is the power source. This is God himself, and this is you. And we want to make sure we go ahead and turn our light on, because that means that we're going to stay connected to the fullness of what God has done for us. But see, it's our choice, church. That's where your faith comes in. You know, it's, it's your faith that turns that switch on and off. And, you know, I talked to you last week just about the fact of being connected, and I want to continue with that. Because one of the things the Lord kept impressing upon me, you know, with the sickness I just came through, I just was like, you know, I felt so tired, so sickly, and, you know, and at times I was so, so thankful that I, I knew I had people praying for me. Because, you know, sometimes the enemy comes against you so hard that, you know, your mind, you just think, you know, really the prayer is Jesus. You know, but that's enough. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Amen. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to share that testimony because one of the things that the Lord showed me was that, you know, Pat, if you just stay connected to what you already have, but see, we think we have to go get something else. We, we think we have to do something different. And the Lord's made it very simple, very simplistic. And he said, all I need you to do is stay connected to what I've already done for you. Wow, what a difference. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, so we're going to look at some things here. And um, I want to talk to you about deciding faith. So Matthew 9. Matthew 9, if you're there, say amen. Amen. Okay, verse 18. Verse 18. It says, while he, Jesus, spoke these things to them, behold, the ruler, and, uh, the ruler came and worshiped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Now, we've got a, a, a guy that's working at the church, at the synagogue, and he's met Jesus, and he's saying to the Lord, look, my daughter's just died, but if you come and lay your hands on her, I know that she will live. So then Jesus, he's on his way. I would say this is a pretty important request, would you not? Yeah. Okay. So then, now look at verse 20. It says, and suddenly a woman who had the flow of 12 years came from behind him and touched the hem of his garment, for she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I should be made whole. And, but Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. So what I saw here was when did she make the connection? 
Did she make the connection before she was healed or after she was healed? Before. Before. See, a lot of times as Christians, we think that we've got to go pray and pray for an hour, you know, pray for two hours because two hours is really not long enough. So we probably need to go three. <laughs> you know, we need to pray loud. We need to pray hard. You can't, if you're going to pray, you got to get on your knees. You can't stand up. You, no, you got to sit down. You got, you know, there's all these things that religion has told us to, in order to make a true connection with the Lord. But what the Lord wants us to understand, even this woman here, she's got Jesus in her midst. You have Jesus in your midst. Amen. If you're a born again believer, he's right here. Amen. So you can touch. Last week I talked, you don't need a priest. You don't need a pastor. You've got a priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> we all have a priest and all we have to do Amen. is just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, that's touching the hem of his garment. You know, and so when I looked at this, I thought, oh, Lord, it was just so beautiful because when this woman, which I always thought, just how rude are you? I mean, this man, his daughter is dying. But then the Lord showed me, he said, Pat, this is a deciding faith. Her faith decided when she heard about Jesus she made a determination in her heart, and she said, you know, this is what I'm going to go do. She wasn't waiting for Jesus to come to her. She went to him. Why? Because she heard of all the things that the Lord would do for his people. Yes. Man. Man, what an awesome father and, and Lord we serve. Amen. You know, and so when I saw that, and then I thought, you know, because uh, here in the scripture it says, and suddenly in some, some versions says, a certain woman. But then, as you go on down, when Jesus turned to her, he called her daughter. See, your faith moves you from just a person to a daughter Hallelujah. or to a son Amen. of the living God. Amen. See, when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, see, she had Jesus right in her midst. She believed in, in him. She decided to take what Jesus had been saying, what he had been preaching, what he had been doing, and she decided for herself. That's a deciding faith. That's a faith that made a decision before she touched the hem of his garment. Amen. See, you can make a decision on how you want to receive your healing. The Lord's not going to come against that. It's all through the New Testament. According to your faith. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. She made a connection and she said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Amen. Turn with me to 1 Peter 2.24. 1 Peter 2.24. It says, who himself bore our sins and in his own body on the tree that we, now see, this is telling us why, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you might be healed. Does it say that? Word. Does it say if you pray a certain way, you no. might be healed? No. Are y'all sure? <laughs> you better be sure. Yes, amen. Amen. See, because this is what the stripes that G when he took those stripes, those stripes were for you, for all of your sins, for all of your healing, no matter what it is. That's why I had you stand today to show you, church, you're not alone. Right. You know, people are going through things just like you are. And see, Jesus went through everything for every one of you so that we could come together and say, look, we're going to pull our faith together. We're going to stand. We're going to walk with what the word of God says for us. Amen. Amen. So by the stripes that Jesus took, you were healed. That's past tense. See, that's something that's already done right here, guys, right here. By his stripes right here. Yeah. This is the power source. And then you, if you're a born again believer, you're plugged in. But see, you get the right to turn it on or turn it off. See, your faith, your deciding faith is going to say, no, I'm going to, this is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to receive my healing. 
And the Lord says, so be it unto your faith. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. Whoo, glory to God. All right, turn with me to Romans 8, 24. Romans 8, 24. You know, she had a hope. And you know, hope is that great expectation. It's that positive expectation. It's using your positive imagination in order to see exactly what Jesus has promised you. You walking in it. That's what hope is. It's not wishing. It's not wishing. Wishing does nothing. See, but the hope in the Lord, this is something that she had a positive imagination. See, she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment as he walks by. And you notice, bless her heart, she goes to the back. She knew exactly what was going to take place if someone turned on her. She was unclean. And, and through the law, it, they would have been right to stone her right where she stood. But see, she bowed down. That's showing a humble spirit. She bowed down and she came, but she did exactly what she had put in her heart to do. When she heard what the Lord was doing, I can just see her. Well, if he does that for them, he can do that for me. Yeah. See, because she, he, Jesus was her last hope. She had been, she had had this condition for 12 years. Now, Jairus, her little girl, his little girl was 12 years old. But, but you know, and, and a lot of times when you see uh, talking about women, um, the female gender, the Lord talks about his bride, his church in the new covenant. And as I looked, I thought, you know, the 12 tribes, you know, his 12 disciples, this woman, she was going to do this for 12 years years, guys. If you've been going through something for 12 years, you say, well, pastor, I've been going through this for 20. Well, th th it's over. Amen. It's over. Yes. Amen. It's because over. we just have to make the decision that the word of God is true yes. and every other voice is a liar. Yes. So whatever would come. Yeah, but I've got the doctor's report and those are facts. Those are facts. They may even be true facts. But they're not the truth. Amen. That's the truth right Amen. there. And the truth says that I am through the stripes that Jesus took. I am the healed. healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Healed. Amen. 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 Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. It says Romans 8, 24, 25. Romans 8, 24, 25. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is, uh, that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for it? But if we hope, have that, you know, that positive expectation, we keep that imagination, we've got to stay clicked in and, and attached to what the Word of God tells us. If we hope for that, we will, we will see not then to do it with patience. Yes, we're going to do it with patience. With patience. We're going to do it with patience. I just want to share this with you. Sometimes when you go to stand for your healing, it may take you time. <laughs> I call them the winters. What, are, what is that? Well, some was healed as they went, you know. <laughs> so you may be a winter, winter. you know. Amen. And so, but, you know, they went. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. They were healed as they went. In other words, do what the Word of God says. And as you do, you're going to walk into your healing. Yes. Do you realize that, <laughs> you know, Jesus, healing always followed him? Hmm. Why? Because Jesus needed your faith to connect. And if you needed healing, you needed deliverance, you need to be set free, you just connected with Jesus. Yeah. See, those types of things follow him. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's turn to Mark 5. I'm going to talk to you about a defiant faith. Mark 5, 21. Through 334. Mark 5, 21. Now, when Jesus had crossed over uh, by the boat on the other side, a great multitude gathered to him. And he was by the sea, and behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue named Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell to his feet, and he begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. 
So Jesus went with him, and a great mul multitude followed him and thronged him. See, one of the things that I see, and then if you drop on down, verse 25, and a, and a certain woman with the flow, with the flow of blood for, 20, for 12 years had been suffering many things from the physicians. Now, I want to just stop there for just a second, because um, history, you know, and commentary shows us that um, at this point in time, natural remedies, there was only about 11 that they had for this type of condition for this woman. And so this condition, she had went through everything that she had with every remedy. And some of these remedies were really, really harsh and hard on the body. And she was so sick that she was to the point that she, not only did she not have money, but it's showing us for 12 years that she had no hope after this. She needed to be touched by Jesus. Amen. And so here we see that it says, and, and she grew worse. 27. She heard about Jesus. She came behind him in the crowd and she touched his garment. Or she said, if only I may touch his garment, I will be made whole. This is, this is what, this is what I want, the point that I want to bring to you is that in, in verse, um, in verse 32, it says, and he looked around and he saw she had, done, uh, she had done this thing. And talking about the woman, the woman was fe filled with fear and trembling, knowing that what had happened to her, she came and fell at his feet and told him the whole truth. Here she just explained her heart out to the Lord. And then he says, and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your afflictions. See, the thing that the Lord showed me, he said, Pat, you know, when it comes to um, connecting to your healing, there's going to be times that you're going to have to defy what the world tells you. Well, the world, we know, if it's not lining up with the word of God, we can't go by it. Amen. Yeah. And, and I share this with you guys. You know, just because there's a law made or... You know, this person says it's okay, and that person says it's okay. If it's not in the Word of God for you to do it, it's not okay. Yeah. It's just not okay. Right. And see, that's why the Lord gave us His Word, so that we would have a guide to go by. Yeah. And then He brings in the Holy Spirit beside of it, and that leads and guides and directs us through that Word. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. All right. All right. So now I'm going to continue. Uh, in Mark 30, uh, 5, 35 here, it says, while he was still speaking, some came to the ruler of the synagogue's house and said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the, the teacher any further? Now, it says in verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard that word spoken. See, as soon as Jesus heard this word spoken, she's dead. Jesus defied that. Why? Because he was the truth. And he was bringing truth to that situation. Yeah. And Jesus said, no, she's not dead. That's exactly what he's getting ready to say. So let's go on here. And he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid. Believe only. Believe only. Is that hard? So what is it we're to do? Believe. Believe. See, God gave the power. He's been the source. Jesus fulfilled that. And as a born again believer, you're now connected. But see, your belief is what turns that power on and off. See, your belief and what Jesus spoke. And you know what I saw <laughs> when I saw this? What was he... What was he telling this father? He was telling this father, Jairus, don't lose me now. Yeah. Right. Come on, brother, stay up, stay connected. Don't, 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 don't you dare walk in fear. Don't walk in doubt. But all the things that was going on in the world, it's pretty strong stuff. When you've got someone that comes and says, don't bother the teacher. Your daughter's dead. 
In other words, no hope. No more prayer. It's over. It's not over. Jesus said, don't get into fear. Believe only. You know, and, and when I saw this, what, what Jairus was about to do, because why would Jesus tell him that? Because he was getting ready to click and turn his faith off. He thought it was too late. Are you in a situation right now you feel it's too late? It's never too late with Amen. the Lord. Right. You know, he is your hope. Right. Oh, but pastor, I, you know, I believed and I prayed. And, you know, I just, you know, I prayed really hard. And, you know, I've done all these things and I've done all these things and I've done all these things. Honey, it doesn't matter what you've done. You need to stay connected with what Jesus has done for you. Amen. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and see, when we get to the point to where, yeah, but Lord, I've done this and I've done that and I've done, I'm, I was the queen of that. I was down one day praying and Lord, I, you know, I've done it. And I had big old alligator tears. <laughs> You know, and I, I mean, I was, it was coming from my heart. God, you know, I prayed and, you know, I fasted and, you know, I've been reading my Bible for an hour a day. And <laughs> a whole hour, Lord. You know, and, it, and the thing of it is we think we're going to get in there and we're going to pray and we're going to move God. You're not going to move God. There's nothing you can do to give to God. He's given to you everything Amen. so you can just receive it. Hallelujah. Amen. That's Glory be to God. Yeah. He's got the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. It's so awesome yeah. to know that you have given us everything yeah. we need, yeah. Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. Glory be to God. And so, <laughs> verse 37, he says, And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And what was, what was he doing? <laughs> He was kicking out the doubt and the unbelief. And he knew, he knew that the boys, it wasn't all three. It wasn't all 12. You notice that? It was three. He brought them in. He said, now look. And, and you know, he knew that these guys would stand with him. I'm telling you, church, when you need somebody, you need people to stand with you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We need people to stand with us. Yes. Oh. You know, when I saw that, I just thought, Lord Jesus, this man's probably standing there. And Jesus said, now, don't you, don't you get in fear. You just believe. And then he turns back and he's calling the boys in. And they're walking in and he brings in the mom and dad. And the dad's probably just standing there going. But he's telling him, I'm telling you guys, you be very careful what comes out of your mouth. Wow, amen. Be very, 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 very careful what comes yes. out of your mouth when you're standing and believing something. Yes. Because what you say, you build your work. And you know, what you say is what you believe. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, don't even get me going there. <laughs> Y'all pull this stuff out of me. <laughs> you know, and, and then look at... Um, well, just for time's sake, you know, he's, there's a commotion, they're loud, and, and, but Jesus says in 39, he says, he says, why is all this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead. <laughs> She's just sleeping. What's Jesus doing? He's defying the word that the world came across with. Yeah. See, they came across with death. Jesus said, no, that, that word's not in me. Only life's in me. Yeah. Only help for you is in me. Death, destruction, sickness, disease, that's not in me. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. We serve a glorious God. Amen. So, and then in verse 40, it says, so they ridiculed him. Well, church, guess what? If you're standing for a healing, there may be somebody in your family there may be some of your neighbors, they may be people at work that will say, are you kidding me? You know, how long have you been standing for this? Surely you, surely you understand if it's not happened by now, it's never going to happen. What you going to do? Huh. So you better make your mind up now, church. Amen. You've got to get a mindset. Philippians 4.8, I'm going to think on things that are just 
and pure and holy. You know why? Because that's the things that God has in his word for me. Now that's what I'm going to think of because that scripture says, think that is your responsibility. It is your responsibility for you to keep your mind set upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And his promises are yes and amen. amen. That's yeah. right. That's right. All right. So it says, and then he says, but then he put them all outside. So just put, just put the naysayers outside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In your life, just put them outside and you stay with the Lord. And he took the father and the mother and, of the child and those that were with him. And he entered where the child was laying and he took the child by the hand and he said, little girl, I say unto you, arise. And he immediately the girl arose and walked and she was 12 years of age. All right. Turn with me to Luke 8, 43. And I'm going to do this in closing. Luke 8, 43. I'm actually going to bump up to 40. And I just want y'all to see something. And, you know, while you're there, um, if you look on up in 37 and verse 37, Jesus had just uh, healed the gentleman with all the demons and he lived in caves. And, you know, we talked about that a little bit last week. But um, the thing that I saw that, you know, when Jesus cast the demons out of the pigs and it scared these people so bad. It says there in, 30, in verse 37 and the Amplified that they were horrified of Jesus and they, they were rebuking him to leave. Wow. But see, fear is never with faith. Peace is always with faith. Because, why? Because when I know that the Lord is working and he's healing me or he's working on my family, he's working on my job, whatever it may be, the Lord is going to have peace in your heart with you. You know, I always tell people, if you've got the peace of God here, you can move. You may have a big question mark up here. You can still move. But if you don't have peace here, don't move. It doesn't matter if you think, well, I can figure this out, honey. You don't want to do that. No. Right. You don't want to do that. You want to wait and be led by the Lord because he leads you by peace. Amen. Right. Amen. All right. Now here I want to talk to you about an intentional faith. So it says, and so Jesus returned and the multitudes welcomed him. See, now right here in verse 40, now there's a different set of people that are welcoming Jesus. The other people that saw Jesus cast the spirits out, it horrified them so bad. They rebuked Jesus and said, you need to leave us. Don't come back. Just leave us here. So now here in verse 40, they were waiting for him to come. See, that's an intentional faith. Are you waiting upon the Lord? See, that's intentional. Not, well, whatever will be, will be. That is not intentional. All right. And be, number 40, 41 here. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was the ruler of the synagogue. Now, this is the third uh, relay on this. And he said, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged and come into the house. And he had an only daughter that was 12 years of age, for she was dying. And then it goes on, and it says in verse 44, it says, and then they came, and the woman came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. See, an intentional faith, she chose to never forget what she needed from the Lord. You know, I mean, if you've got an ailment, you're probably not going to forget it because it's an ailment. You know, if I've got a, a problem with my hand, my, you know, my ankle, my knee, whatever, you know, if that ailment is still there. But when you pray, you don't forget that. You know, a lot of people say, well, pastor, how do you, you just keep praying about that? Over? I just bring the word of the Lord up to him. I say, Lord, this is what your word says about my healing. And I just receive it. I, but I don't keep, I mean, I don't ask for it every time. I don't say, Lord, I thank you that you would heal me. I usually do that once. Why? The Lord knows what I need before I even ask. So then what I do is I take his word and I say, Lord, this is your word. You said that by Jesus' stripes, when he went, matter of fact, me and the Lord, we just talk about that word. I say, Lord, remember when your son was walking and he had those stripes on his back and he was so weak. He was doing that for me. And then he couldn't carry the cross, but you provided someone to even help him so he could complete that task for me. 
He did that for me, Lord. So I thank you that this is healed in Jesus' name. And there's nothing that can stop it from happening in the name of Jesus. See, church, we've got to make a decision that our faith is intentional and we are not going to let it go. Amen. 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 And, and one of the things that I saw that this woman did, she did not let her past. She did not let her past control her future. You know, the word came forth this morning that, you know, some of you are living in the past. Dear Lord, why do you want to live there for <laughs> There's nothing in it for you. You can't change it. You can't add to it. You can't take away from it. You can't multiply. You can't do any. It's done. It's history. That's right. Jesus is right here and in all of eternity for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So she did not because, see, the doctors had told her, that's it. You're history, lady. Just go home and die. <laughs> Again, that might have been facts. But that's not the truth. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I just want to close with this and just remind you that, you know, there's a deciding faith. There's a defiant faith. There's going to be times that you're going to have to defy what the world would tell you to do if it does not line up with the word of God. Amen. And then there's an intentional faith and that intentional faith keeps carrying us and it keeps moving us forward. What is it doing? It keeps us connected because I'm going to choose that whatever is in my life, whatever I'm needing healing for, if I'm needing deliverance from something that happened in the past, if it's something that I feel I just can't get over, if it's something that I feel someone has wounded me or broken my heart, the Lord Jesus felt that for you, and he d was delivered for you so that you can walk free from that. Amen. Amen. You, Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we just Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you thank want you, us whole and healed. And Lord, you have provided wholeness and healness. Yes. Lord, you provided the healing power of God, yes. a, a divine body that can walk in perfect health. Lord, we just thank you that whether it is by spirit, soul, or body, Lord, no matter what it is, Father, no matter what it is, I thank you that each and every person can receive that healing from you today. And Lord, we just give you now all the praise for what you've already done. Lord, teach us, show us to stay connected, Lord. Show us, Lord, it is a decision. Yes, Lord. And we may have to defy the naysayers, but Lord, you've given us the strength and the authority and the power to do exactly that. And Lord, we choose to keep our faith intentionally toward you. And when we do that, as these received, so shall we. And we give you all praise and all glory in Jesus' name. I want you to stand to your feet, church. I want the, the uh, prayer team to come on up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. If there's anyone that feels, look, I just need to connect my faith with yours. I want you to come on up. Quickly, quickly, move, move, move. Quickly, quickly, move. Come on up. Come on up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray with you. We're going to connect our faith with yours. But what's most important is we're going to connect our faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise you, Father. We just give you glory. Now, if, you, and if, if there's anyone here, if there's anyone here that feels like Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Anyone else? Anyone up? Quickly, quickly. Don't, don't be afraid, church. Don't be afraid. If you need connection with your faith, if there's something you've been standing for, if there's something that you say, look, I just need to believe this. I, maybe I'm not believing right. Whatever it is, the Lord is here to answer that prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. See, the Lord wants to quicken your heart church. He's here to heal. Hallelujah. Oh, we just praise you. Now, I just want you to just stay in the praise, stay in worship before the Lord. Just reach out your hands toward these people that they may be able to receive. Just pray in the spirit, pray scripture. Father, we just thank you for that right now.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. See, the Lord wants his body whole and healed, church. He wants them whole and healed so that they can walk out into this world and be delivered from the things that the enemy would put upon them. There's somebody here today on your right ear. You've been having problems with your right ear or your ears. The Lord is wanting you to just raise your hand. He said, I'm going to heal it right here, right now in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Any ear, ear infections, ear problems, just raise your hands. Just receive the healing power of God right now. Right now. It is His it's his will, he's telling you. It is his perfect will for those ears to be perfect in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, 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 Lord. A shoulder, a right shoulder, a right shoulder. And I don't know if it's in the shoulder or down into the elbow. The Lord is saying, if you've been having problems there, just raise your hand. Raise your hand and receive it in the name of Jesus. Yes, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just speak healing over these arms, over these muscles, over these tendons, over this ligament, all over these nerves. I speak healing, healing all the way through in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is your anointing going forth. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that you said that the stripes that Jesus took, Lord, it was more than enough for the healing that they need in this arm. And we give you glory and honor for it right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so there's someone or many has been having problems in the stomach area. And also in the back, and the in the, but but in the back, it's it's more of a um, it, it starts from the top here, and the pain will shoot up, but a lot of it's shooting down. And so the Lord said that that is something that has been in you for a while, and He said, but you've learned to tolerate it. You've learned to tolerate it. He said, I don't want you to tolerate it anymore. Raise your hand. Who is that? Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we just speak to this healing right now. We speak to the stomach area. We speak to the back, to the muscles. We speak to the nerves, Lord. We speak, Father, your perfect healing. Lord, you said that by the stripes that Jesus took, Lord, that that body is whole. You said that you wished above all all things, Lord, all things that we would work and walk in perfect health, perfect peace, Lord, that is perfect through you. As Jesus' body is, so is ours. Hallelujah. And we receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.